okay so uh, so last time we talked about family so this is the uh, so we'll talking about society customs cultures so society means uh, it is simply organization of member agents okay so a, a system of social relationships between individuals so the importance of society lies in the fact that it controls regulates uh, the behavior of individuals both by law and customs and society is dynamic it changes over time and place okay for example uh, like i said you are a group of uh, mba students okay so your uh, your uh, other uh, so you are guided by the uh, by this college which is a, which is also a society and your society is, is dynamic means your your behavior and your uh, and, and your behavior will change over time and place okay so the structure refers to the patterns of inter relationship between persons so every society has a social structure a complex of major institution groups power structure and social and status hierarchy so, so, so social institutions can be anything like the family school church clubs hospitals political parties etc so like i said every all the whatever like family schools these are all, all societies social institutions so within each institution the rights and duties of the members are defined for example in this college is also a social institution the rights and duties of the students are defined as well as teachers so your uh, duty is to learn to study and our duty is to teach okay so uh, all the all the members of all the societies or social institutions are defined so role uh, so next concept we call the role so role can be there are two types ascribed and acquired so ascribed means uh, what whatever is given by by virtue of your birth status age and sex okay so you are born as a male or female so that is your ascribed role but acquired means by virtue of education or others okay so uh, so like uh, like there's a difference between the sex and, and gender okay so sex is what you are born with whether you are born male or female is sex and gender means male or uh, gender means which is defined by your education or what 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 role you play in the society okay so it it may not it's it's not always the same okay so your sex and gender uh, may not be the same okay so, uh, like for example a man can play the role of a husband father employee friends son etc at, at different times of days or or at, at different times okay so in at home is his a husband and father at, at the workplace is an employee is a friend so these are all types of role or or they or they acquired role okay so customs it's customs means it is habitual practice or the usual way of acting in a given circumstance okay so there are custom there are technically two types folkways and mores so folkways means the right way of doing things and if uh, if these are not followed or if there's a break if you break these four ways it's not punishable for example manners and etiquette okay so manners means uh, the way you walk the way you talk okay, the way you eat uh, these are manners and manners and etiquette okay but these are not punishable means if you don't follow certain rules uh, you'll not be punished but mores are more stringent uh, customs or norms and these may be punishable uh, like for example um uh, while, while you're driving there is certain rule that uh, at what speed you must drive okay so these are uh, mores or if you drive uh, if you drive faster than a certain speed you may you, you may be punishable okay so these are difference between folkways and mores folkways are not punishable these are uh, these are uh, usually manners and etiquettes and uh, the starting point of all customs is convention means uh, the customs are made uh, like due to uh, due to our own, own convention by uh, in the, by the uh, by the history or, or previously these were uh, due to convention like okay? convention is the practice promoted by convenience uh, of the society or the individual means all the customs were actually derived from the convenience of the of the people who made those customs or norms so culture means this is a culture is the learned behavior which has been socially acquired or um these are behavior which have been acquired through generations or from parents to children okay and culture is transmitted from one generation to another through learning process formal and informal okay so your parents taught you some cultures or behaviors and you teach your children or you uh, you learn from the school college you learn from the from the, uh, from the society okay this is called culture which it's a learned behavior which has been socially acquired okay so uh, uh a culture sense means culture contact or uh, when there's uh, when there's contact between two people with different types of culture there is diffusion of culture both ways means 
for example uh, when they, when they in uh, like uh, the indian students come to study in nepal or the nepali student go abroad there will be uh, diffusion of culture in both ways so the nepalese will learn indian cultures and the indians will learn the nepalese culture this is called acculturation okay so there has been, uh, like various ways of culture contact like trade and commerce industrialization propagation of religion education and conquest so trade and commerce uh, migration of people for jobs or trade uh, they take along with their traditional medical knowledge from the country for example uh, the asian people or the Nepal or the indians and uh, the people from the asia they when they travel to europe or america they uh, they took along with them their their knowledge of of ayurveda and, and yoga which has become popular in those parts of the world okay so uh, next is is industrialization industrial workforce becomes the melting pot of cultures when people migrate to different states or cities so due to work, work uh, due to their work uh, they will the people will travel from different places so that is also um, there will also be diffusion of culture between different cities or states and uh, when people uh, people also travel for the sole purpose of practice of religion so that will also uh, a diffuse culture from uh, from both ways okay. education uh, students are expected to acculturate or absorb some values of culture traits or characteristics of the school like i said uh, when uh, for, uh, when the foreign students come to study in nepal uh, they will be they are expected to ab uh, absorb some of the values of our country so that is acculturation and some students also like as uh, students uh, may migrate for further education to urban areas or foreign countries okay so conquest is another also an, another important way of acculturation for example the british uh, brought their culture into india through conquest when they conquered in india uh, they also brought their cultures so there are some good aspects and bad aspects of of acculturation uh, for example the introduction of scientific medicine is brought through culture contact and there are changes in food habits of people for example adopting western diet so adopting western diet uh, there are some good aspects and bad aspects of that uh, the bad aspects may be that uh, there will be weight gain due to the you know the western diet the fast food diet oily diet but there are also some uh, good aspects like uh, like some people may be uh, may gain weight which is uh, in those who were previously undernourished okay so the uh, another is the like widespread use of of tobacco which is also uh, the bad aspect of acculturation and tobacco is uh, you know prevalent throughout the world it is due to acculturation which is brought about by the western countries so next is the um, concept of standard of living okay so standard of living means the usual scale of expenditure the goods we consume and the service we enjoy for example how much we can spend and what we earn and and what are the services we own that is uh, define our standard of living so obviously the, uh, this depends on the level of national income the total amounts of goods and services the country is able to produce the size of the population the level of education uh, the general price level of the goods and and the and the distribution of the national income uh, is there any, any question till now or are you understanding or is there any any problem in in hearing me so social problems uh, in the community there are both individual and social problems okay so individual problems uh, become social problems when they affect a large number of people for example like poverty crime and disease alcoholism these are all social, uh, these are all both individual problems but uh, when they become when they affect a large number of people uh, they, they they become a, a social problems okay so alcoholism venereal disease mental illness uh, these are all both social problems as well as like public health because you know mental illness it's a huge public, social problem as well as public health and venereal disease alcoholism these are these both affect the society as well as the um health or the public health and for example uh, like you can see right now the people uh, in the like due to the coronavirus people are in lockdown and this has increased a lot of mental illness or mental problems and i think you know uh, you know there have been a lot of suicides also in nepal also i think more than 300 so that's a both social problem as well as the health aspect for public health problems so social pathology the uh, poverty crime delinquency and vagrancy these are social pathology in, and these uh, describe the relation between both the disease and the social condition of the society so the community is the people the people living in a particular place or region and usually linked by common interest okay so the characteristics of community are the community is in a contiguous geographic area is composed of people living together 
and people cooperate to satisfy their basic needs. And there is there are common organizations like schools, markets, stores, banks, hospitals. So these comprise the society or the community. Okay, these are basic four characteristics of the community. So uh, the 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 structure of the of the society or the community is, can be divided in in terms of caste, income, or or occupation. In terms of caste, you know, in Nepal there are I think six castes like Dalit, Jandatis, Brahmin, Chetris, uh, Gurungs. Okay, uh, don't know the all, but uh, there are six types of six castes have been have been defined. And in terms of income, the the user, uh, the user classification is upper, middle, and lower class. And in terms of occupation, um, they have been defined as five uh, basic types of occupation classification. Professional occupation means, you know, like doctors and, and engineer, engineers, uh, like these are professionals. And in intermediate occupation are like managers, uh, managers, clerks, and skilled occupations are like, you know, housewives. Uh, or housewife is also a skilled occupation. And others like, you know, uh, like uh, those who, uh, like uh, masons, the uh, the laborers are also skilled workers, and unskilled workers are unskilled workers are like you know those who uh, like uh, cleaners and, and sweepers. Uh, these are uh, known as unskilled workers or unskilled occupation. Okay, so the, uh, these are the five types of occupation classifications. Uh, this this may be asked in, in your Bible or in your practice also. So this is the classification of occupation is also important for your Bible also. Next is the what are the, there are other measures of social differences also like education, income, person, power, religion, rural and urban. Okay, so I think you know about this. So uh, next is socioeconomic status scale. Okay, so in, in India there have been uh, various types of scales have been defined uh, to classify the soci socioeconomic status. So uh, these are some of the classifications and the uh, and the last one or the multi-dimensional property index is an international classification. Which has recently been developed. So we'll be talking about Skupusami social economic scale because this is the one which is also used in Nepal. Um, so there, it comprises of three uh, three factors: the education of the head of the family, and occupation of the head of the family, and total family income. Okay. So remember here, it is the education of the head of the family that is important, and occupation is also of the head of the uh, of the head of the family only. Okay. So not necessarily the one the like for, like for example, if, and, and the drawback of this is that the, if, if the father is the head of the family and he may not be educated and he may not have a good occupation, but his sons and daughters may have good ed education and occupation, but they are not considered for the scale. Only the head of the family is considered, okay? So that's one of the drawbacks of this scale. So, so anyway, the scale comprises of uh, these three, uh, three factors, education, occupation, and family income. So each is, is given some scores. So the highest or the professionals get seven score like that. So they'll, each of the three have a certain scores, okay? And the and the total score of the three will, will define whether they are in upper class, upper middle class, lower middle, upper lower or lower class, okay? So this depends on the scoring of the, of the total three, okay? So the maximum is, maximum is 29 and minimum is three, okay? So uh, family, uh, family income means total uh, family income. So this is actually the, it says more than 2000 is the highest, but this is the very old scale. So re recently uh, for Nepal, uh, there have been some changes in uh, the income in terms of Nepal. Okay, so this is the modified in terms of Nepalese rupees. So as you can see, the highest is 97,451 and the lowest is 4,850. Okay, so this is, has been modified for Nepalese context. Okay. So you don't have to remember this, but you must know that what are the factors that uh, factors in the Kupu Sami scale. You have to know the uh, at least the names and the total scoring and how it's done. You have to remember, but you don't have to remember all the scores and all the points and scores. Okay. So next uh, important one of the important is also uh, the multi-dimension property index. Okay. So again, you don't have to know about all the things, but you have to know what is the multi-dimension property index. Okay. So this has been defined. Uh, this has been developed. Uh, so that there will be uniformity in the in defining poverty. Okay, so there are three dimensions of the poverty: health, education, and living standard. Okay, so in health, there is nutrition and child mortality. Do you know what is child mortality? Can anyone tell me? Can anyone tell me what is I mean by child mortality? So there is a flat per thousand. 
So okay, uh, child mortality means under five mortality. Okay, under five mortality is child. I mean, uh, death of the child between one and four, one and five years old. Okay, so not it's not it's not under uh, it's not actually under five mortality. Okay, so child mortality means after the uh, after the, the child is one years old and before five years old. So it's actually um, the any any children who are uh, more than one year and less than five years. So that's uh, child mortality. Okay. So another is the nutrition of those children, and the second one is education. That is years of schooling or the average number of uh, school schooling and school attendance. It means what percentage of the the uh, children actually attend the school. A living standard comprised of cooking fuel, what what type of fuel they use, sanitation, water, electricity, floor, and assets. Okay, these are the uh, just ten indicators for the multi-dimensional property index. Okay, so uh, social class and health. As you know that. Uh, large number of studies have linking the social class and incidence of disease means uh, the, there is a direct link between the uh, your your living standard and the incidence of disease obviously so income occupation education are generally positively correlated with health stress means higher the income uh, better education and better occupation means they will be more healthy and less likely to have disease and vice versa or less income less education will have more poverty and more disease so individuals in the upper individuals in the upper social class have a longer life expectancy, less mortality, and better health than those in the lower class. Okay, so it's generally said that uh, non-communicable diseases are more common in higher class, and communicable diseases are more common in lower class. But it's not always, uh, not for always, and not for every disease, but most commonly. But I know at present in, in Nepal there is both uh, double burden. It's called a double burden of uh, disease. In the developing countries, they, uh, like in Nepal and and, and, and India, uh, the term used is double burden of disease because we have both uh, communicable disease, which is uh, prevalent since you know, since a long time, and now we are also facing the disease or the non communities like coronary heart disease, cancers, accidents. These are non communities but these are also increasing. Okay, so we have both communicable and non communities and it's called the double burden of disease. So you, 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 you may be asked, uh, what is double burden of disease? So double burden of disease means uh, in, in, in countries, in developing countries like Nepal and India, we have both communicable disease, which has present from history, which have, which have present from long time. And uh, recently there is increase in non communicable disease. So this is called double burden of disease. So factors involved in social class differences in health and disease, uh, like uh, physical environments, housing, safe water, and access to clean air. So, this will obviously be uh, better in, in in the higher social classes, and those uh, those in, in the lower class they have less uh, they have uh, like they don't have access to safe water and clean air, so they'll be um, more, more likely to have disease. And difference in the in the service provided means they will depending on the place, depending on the geographical geographical area, and depending on the on the community or or, or, the, or the society the services provided we will, will also be different like the service or the health service like for example health services will be different in the village than in, in the cities okay so the village will have obviously less uh, less sophisticated services as compared to the cities okay so material uh, material resources means income wealth and position of tools for better health they will obviously be better in the higher classes and generating endowment uh, like I said in previous uh, previous class also, this also influences one's liability to to disease. Okay, for example, whether they have whether they uh, whether there is prevalence of consanguine uh, marriage or not between uh, cousins, and these uh, will be these uh, will be will be will affect the probability of having the disease. And education status, so the illiterate illiterate uh, people are likely to have much difficulty in pursuing measures, which may conduce to good health means. If you are, if the if the person is illiterate, they will they are less likely to listen or less likely to understand what is good and, and what is bad, and they will be they will be following their traditional methods, and uh, it is difficult for them. Difficult it is difficult for those people to make them understand. Uh, so that is educational status and an attitude of disease. Okay, so the people who are regard illness is a punishment, and their people who regard education illness is due to natural causes. Okay, these are differences. In Attitude due to difference in education and uh, education and their social class. Okay.